And with us right now, we've got Chris Mead. Chris, you're the chief revenue officer for a product called CrossNet. Uh, and, and so just first off, before we get going and kind of talk about what you do there um, and kind of the history, just in a nutshell, the, I mean, the best way to see what CrossNet is, is to go to crossnetgame.com. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you explain exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, so about two years ago, back in 2017, we invented a four-way volleyball net. We were up late one night, had about 200 ideas. We were checking off what could we invent. And four-way volleyball was the last idea there. And, and what, no one's doing this or what? Nobody was doing it. We did a quick Google search, uh, looked through the patents, was just completely available. Went to Walmart, we tied two volleyball nets together. And a year later, we had a final product that we were ready to sell. That's just amazing. <laughs> That's one of those stories that you know people are going to be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. All right. Now, listen, it's one thing to think about the idea. It's another thing to, you know, because a lot of people come up with a lot of ideas uh, and, and then they don't execute on it fully. And mm -hmm. so you've got a great idea. What do you do next? Yeah. So we had a great idea. Uh, our buddy, Mike, who founded the company with us, graduated from Northeastern, said, I do not want to get a real job. I do not want a nine to five. I want to become an entrepreneur. I want to make this product happen. So we uh, found manufacturers, we found a really good uh, sporting goods manufacturer overseas, uh, had them create, uh, sign off some NDAs, create the product, send it back to us, did a bunch of round of revisions. And we started setting it up at our local beach in Rhode Island, where we're from, we're up in Connecticut. And it just turned heads. We'd set it up and 20, 30 people would just gawk at it, come try to play, have fun with us. And we knew we were on something when we started setting up the nets everywhere. Wow. So what's what's kind of cool is you can set up and basically it's like you get, it, it, you know, for a lot of businesses, you know, you can't really just stroll into a busy conference center where there's a lot of people, set up your wares and demo for free. But you guys could. Oh, yeah. Like Absolutely. no one was saying, hey, you can't advertise here. Exactly. Yeah, so we do it everywhere and anywhere. We, we've done the music festivals. We've gone everywhere with it. And it's just a good time and nobody's complaining about it. Everyone's having a great time. And it's fun for 10 minutes. It's fun for two hours. So as much time as you have to put into it, you have a great time. So would you actually have units then that like thinking of those first few times that you set up, like if people said, well, I want one of those yeah. and you say, okay, well it's uh, and I think the price point is about 150, about 149 or something like that. 150. So uh, yeah, we would have units back in the, in the back of our car. We'd sell them from the beach. Uh, sometimes we'd sell game used units and break it down and say, Hey, give us 75 bucks for it. Go home and take it home and have fun with it. So. Wow. Wow. Um, when you were first getting your first prototypes back from the manufacturer, um, what did you learn? We learned it was going to be a long process. Uh, right. We were stoked. Obviously, we had this great idea. We knew it was going to be a big company and we, we had a lot of potential, but we couldn't sell a product that wasn't quote unquote perfect. I mean, there's always going to be improvements you want to make. Right. We'd get it back and the colors would be wrong. The logo would be wrong. It wouldn't stand up properly. Yeah. I'd say we probably did five or six rounds of revisions on it, but mm -hmm. we're still making improvements. Like I just got a new pamphlet created for the inside the packaging. But uh, it took a long time, a lot of patience. Uh, and if you're gonna be manufacturing a product, you need to have good communication with your supplier. So you went from the beach uh, and obviously you're thinking, okay, we need to start selling these more than just like demo and, and retail sales, uh, individual retail sales. So what's your next step? Yeah, so the next step was, so we built a beautiful website. Uh, we started getting some traffic in. What we really lacked was having a really good video to sell and market. So we, we started reaching out to the typical influencers, but we wanted to find really high quality influencers that could provide us a high quality video but also have quality engagement back. Uh, we see it's really hard to, to find a good influencer that's really gonna give you that return on your investment. Yeah. Especially when the product weighs 20 pounds. So every time we sent one out, we'd almost be losing a hundred dollars like in at risk. But one day we woke up to a video from, we shipped one out to Latvia. A random place, somebody was interested in Latvia. We woke up and they put up a video. There's a lot, Latvia Olympic team. And we woke up to millions of views, thousands of shares. And that was our first like viral video. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, so what do you do with influencer marketing right now? Like what, what is your process for identifying influencers, knowing who's going to be a good use of your time? Obviously, you know, you've got, it, it's not like this is free. This is, you know, when you ship out a unit to an influencer, A, you don't know if it's going to work out and B, yeah. I mean, you just, you have hard costs associated yeah. with every one of those. 100%. Yeah. And we're self-funded completely. So it's not like we had tons of money just to blow on influencers, but we really looked at, who our target market was, we found that volleyball players love the game and moms love the game to buy for themselves and also their children. Mm -hmm. So we really targeted, let's get one high quality video from a volleyball player and let's get one really high quality video from a mom or a dad or a family member mm -hmm. uh, that we can really run ads on. So we got, we got those videos, we're very happy. Always we'll take more videos and the more content, the better of course. But we, until we had those two or three really high quality videos, and then we ran rampant on the ads to uh, to bring traffic to the website. Yeah, um, and and then obviously, so you're selling direct to consumers, and but now you can buy cross net in retail outlets. Is that right? So we uh, we're nationwide with a store called Shields. It's a, a Midwest sporting goods store, mm -hmm. and uh, now we're available online at Target and Walmart and Wish.com, uh, Jet, and tons of other big retailers. So uh, yeah, it's it's growing really big. And so you don't, are, are you physically in the stores or do you just do through uh, online orders? Right now we're online direct from Target to, and Walmart. Uh -huh. uh, we are in the physical retail stores in Shields, uh, which has 23 loca 22 to 23 locations across the United States. Yeah. Uh, but 2020, our goal will be definitely be getting into those stores. Uh, we definitely have a strong case point after our Black Friday sales. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, what is that process like when you're talking with Walmart or Target? Yeah, it, it's an interesting one. Uh, so right now we have a distributor partner uh, called Spreetail. They're out in Nebraska. They're an amazing e-commerce company uh, that helps the whole buying process has got to set up on Walmart and Target. Mm. Uh, but there'll be a whole separate conversation to be had with the buyers that work at Walmart and Target to get product placement. So uh, we'll be trying to get, if we, if things go to plan, We'll be getting a few test locations, uh, getting probably eight to 12 units onto a shelf, probably get them into the test markets in the beach cities yeah. and see them sell out. Uh, we've had no problems selling out in the, in the retail stores. We get constant reorders. So it's just a matter of growth in 2020 is coming soon. That's awesome. And so um, what are now, obviously, is when we're recording this, um, you know, we're kind of in the midst of the holiday season. Um, so what have been some of your bigger challenges um, this, you know, kind of ramping up to you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that sort of thing. Um, and then now that we're in the midst of it, what, what are you experiencing? Yeah. Uh, so right now, so we brought in a lot of inventory uh, for yeah. the holiday, of course. Uh, we actually purchased 7,500 units. So we wow. started just two years ago purchasing 50 units and that was all cash from our bank account. Yeah, we ramped it up. We've doubled it, doubled it, doubled it. Now we're up to 7,500 units and we're selling over like almost 200 units a day just on our dot com and then a 2x to 3x that on our other online retailers. We woke up yesterday across all channels. We sold over 500 at $150 price point. So nice. Some pretty good money coming in. Uh, and now we're just every day. It's kind of it's like, wow, we did 200 orders. Oh, we're doing 250 orders and the inventory is depleting. So a big yeah. challenge is making sure we're, we have that flow of inventory coming in. We, we have Chinese New Year and things we have to worry about. So those manufacturing things are a bit of a challenge, but we need to stay on top of it because our company's only growing. So Yeah, right, right. So, you know, when you go through rapid growth, um, you know, I think a lot, of, and I talk about this from time to time, um, is th there's there are new challenges um, and there are challenges that, you may have not expected, you know, cash flow can absolutely be an issue. You know, when you're like, well, we guys, we got to order 75,000 units uh, because I think that was it 75 or 7,500, 7,500, 7,500. Yeah. So 7,500 units, that's a lot of cash, dude, yeah. to, to lay that out. And so that's scary. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So we've, uh, we've negotiated really good terms with our manufacturer where we only have to pay a small percentage upfront for them to begin making that manufacturing process. Wow. So they get everything up in, up in order. They have their 25, 30 day turnaround time. And then from there, uh, we pay the rest 
later mm -hmm. on when they ship the goods. So we have money nice. coming in on a daily basis from our .com. And then on the retail side, we have checks coming in every 60 days, 90 days. Mm -hmm. so there's a surplus of cash is coming in, coming out. For, but we're 100% self-funded, 100% profitable. It's a, yeah. it's a good feeling. So I, I ask you these questions just simply because you're the chief revenue officer. What does a chief revenue officer do as opposed to like a CFO? Yeah, uh, so right now in my world for a chief revenue officer, I handle all things sales and pretty much almost everything besides social media on the marketing front. Uh, so I'm responsible for helping lead the creation of email content. We have a steady stream of over 70,000 emails right now that we're blasting out Black Friday deals, Cyber Monday sales. I handle all of the wholesale communication, getting us into the big box stores, talking to the distributors, working with international distributors. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot on the plate. So anything that could lead to potential money for CrossNet, I'm, uh, I'm working on it. And um, in terms of getting buzz for your brand, you know, are you still actively reaching out to influencers? Are you reaching out to media? What, what are you doing aside from just paid advertising? Yeah, uh, so my brother, Greg, he run, he's the CEO of the company. He runs all of our, our social media. He works with our agency to work on Facebook advertisements. Uh, he's incredible on Twitter. So every morning uh, he's working on Twitter ads to make our company go viral on Twitter. Mm -hmm. We wake up to hundreds of thousands of impressions at a very nice price point. Yeah. People seeing a four-way volleyball net in their timeline. Yeah. Rolling, they see this four-way net. And normally they have the same reaction that somebody at the beach does. What is this game? They'll give five seconds of their time. They'll click their link. We get their email and we start selling. Yeah. Now, um, so Instagram in particular, you guys have a really good following on Instagram with 68,000 followers. Um, what have been some of the things that you've learned about, and maybe this is more of a, a Greg question or your, your CEO question, but like, um, you know, obviously you have, you know, a lot of great um, action pictures, uh, uh, you know, but uh, aside from that, like, how have you grown your Instagram following? Yeah, uh, there's been a few ways. Uh, recently to date, uh, we've been doing like weekly or bi-weekly giveaways. So tag your friend, tag three friends, like and comment on this picture and share it. And we've seen, if you go through the comments, you'll see tons of, uh, tons of comments on that. We'll then run uh, advertisements on that post to get more engagement and get it mm. into the Explore page. Yeah. We're getting a lot of good traction on that. Uh, we're targeting some of the volleyball competitors in the volleyball community, uh, commenting on those things. So trying to just get out there where people would be interested in our game and then running retargeting on Instagram to get you to shop and get you right. coming to our page. So gaining that, gaining those followers. And then- So I suspect now that uh, I've, I've had all your Instagram up and your webpage up, um, I'm gonna be seeing some, uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna be oh, seeing yeah. some cross net around the internet now. Yeah, my, my friends can't stop seeing it, little like Chris. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Well, Chris Mead, I want to thank you so much. Again, you're the chief revenue officer for CrossNet and they're on the web. You're on the web at crossnetgame.com. Uh, by the time this episode runs, uh, you, uh, of course, you're already available on Amazon. You're available on Walmart and target.com. Uh, and then uh, by the time this publishes, uh, you may be on store shelves. Yeah, let's hope. Awesome. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you so much.